we do the right thing, we can prevent that from happening. That's a lot of dead people. It's a lot of people. And not to mention trillions and trillions of dollars of money saved, resources, and uh, it would uh, really uh, make everyone's lives much sweeter. And uh, ultimately, it's, there, has, there has to be people who organize, and there has to be protests in Washington, right in front of the White House, in front of Congress, uh, in front of the CDC, NIH, FDA. Uh, people 24-7 have to make noise, noise, and noise <laughs> um, until the voice of Susan is heard. And I'll tell you, I know the president wants to act. I know that the president himself is a strong believer uh, of how the, the power of this approach as well as uh, his inner, certain inner advisors. However, he is surrounded by people who are, are advising him to stay away from the hydroxychloroquine and uh, because it's politically toxic. It's been so um, charged up that just even the mention of the word um, causes rational people to lose their minds. And it's br brilliant propaganda. So really what's at stake here is we, we need to uh, create uh, a will of the people, a revealed will of the people, so that that will give the political uh, cover, really, for the president to act. Now, act, what, he's not a king, and he can't just uh, uh, make an order, especially in medicine, right? He's not a doctor, but the, he could have the right people in, in, in his administration who are supposed to be doing their job and advising him properly like the commissioner of the FDA, Stephen Hahn, who knows the truth as well. And he really has to <coughs> come through and do what's best for the president's uh, team, which is looking out for the interests of America. So I, I think that that's where the answer is. It's a, right now, it's a, political, it's a political problem. I really think that if everyone was being prophylaxed and protected that, uh, um, we would be much safer. And actually, I'm going to say to, like, to all you, every, anyone who's listening, um, if you're over the age of 20, order online Quercetin. <laughs> the rabbi will print it. It's Q-U-E-R-C-E-T-I-N. 500 milligrams. Just take it once a day. Together with zinc, elemental zinc, 25 milligrams a day. That will give you a lot of protection and will prevent uh, you from, from spreading it to other people. Um, because it, 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 it works similar to hydroxychloroquine. How do you explain that actually in New York, relatively, uh, things are quiet? And is it herd immunity or why? No, we don't have herd immunities because I know, I know hundreds of doctors that are quietly prescribing uh, hydroxychloroquine and zinc uh, to their patients and, and taking it themselves. Uh, but they're, they're so scared to um, uh, publicize uh, you know, about it because of the effects of their career. So um, that's part of the, that's why. And it has nothing to do with the, the leadership, political leadership. Concerning this surge in Florida and, and other parts of the country, and actually we don't see yet surge in New York, um, what's the explanation to that? Well, they're getting, the, they're, they're getting their first uh, uh, punch. We already got the punch. Um, but it's coming back. I mean, the, the numbers uh, are definitely on the increase. Uh, I don't think it's going to be as bad in New York. Like I said, I know hundreds of doctors that are doing the right thing. Uh, and more importantly, they've stocked up on st stuff for themselves and their, and their families. If there's any explanation, why does it come in waves? Like you said, first wave or second wave? Um, because if uh, it spreads and people not really practicing social distancing, how do we understand it? You know, it quieted down and maybe now coming back. And what can we do to prevent? You said social distancing no good. Uh, well, if you're if you're not prophylactic, 
if you're not taking prophylaxis, then, I mean, you have no choice. You need to uh, practice uh, using protective equipment, masks and gloves, uh, especially when you're coming into contact with other people, um, more so that you don't infect them, actually. And, um, yeah, and you have to stay as far apart from other people as possible. It's not a way to live, in my opinion, <clears throat> but what, what is your alternative? Uh, the other thing is if you take prophylaxis, like, I, I, I mean, now maybe I, I'm going to change because I'm going to be in chemotherapy, um, heavy chemotherapy, but um, I was seeing patients with no mask, but that's how co confident I am in the prophylactic ability of this, of this approach. Uh, but the, the key in New York, we were the first really hit, and we developed uh, effective approaches, not initially. Uh, most people that ended up in hospitals, especially in March and, mid and April, anyone who ended up in a respirator uh, in, in hospitals like NYU, Maimonides, uh, my, Mount Sinai, they had over 90% death rate. So they realized that that you need to start treating earlier and earlier in the hospital. Um, but I've been from the very beginning, don't go to the hospital, you know, and I have the, I have the data to prove it. So, but there's been a very effective and powerful well-financed campaign to suppress these ideas. Um, and the reason why is because they work, it's true. Um, and also, let me ask you a question. Um, why is it that since this all started, there have been zero randomized controlled trials on therapeutic, uh, therapeutics or treatment in the application setting. I was actually wanted. Uh, I was asking. I wanted to ask you this question because from the day one when we spoke about uh, 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 Zelenka's cocktail, I was waiting for exactly these kind of studies to be released, and I cannot understand why. Uh, no studies were made. Oh, it's very simple because it works. And they know it works. And they don't want studies proving that it works. I'm, I'm st I still believe that the president uh, will do the right thing. Um, he has all the information. The ball is in his court. Um, it's not like he's not informed. And um, not that I understand fully the, the world of politics and I understand sometimes things in politics need to be done in a certain way in order to be able to preserve your power so that you can do the right thing uh, call it compromises, whatever but um, I certainly hope before the election well, the sooner the better actually but, uh, I certainly hope that he finds the moral compass I know uh, he probably has. My honor to uh, welcome once again, Dr. Zelenko, who's leading the fight again, and who actually wants to update uh, us on his renewed Zelenko protocol management of COVID-19. Doctor, please update us. Hey, Rabbi, thanks so much for having me. You know, with experience, you gain uh, you can tweak your approach. You can always learn um, and refine your approach. And that's the process uh, that, uh, of life. So I'd like, uh, after five months of experience, I've, at this point, maybe it will change again in a few months, but at this point, I'd like to share with you the, the most updated um, uh, approach that I'm using. So the document you see on the screen, uh, it's titled Free Hospital Management of Zelenko Protocol. And there are links to everything that I'm saying on the bottom, which uh, gives you the sources if you're interested to look a little deeper.
So I think this is a pretty comp comprehensive overview. And I think it's important for a patient. This is really geared towards doctors, but still, um, I think it's important that the, the patient be aware of the treatment options and sometimes even ask the doctor. Because listen, uh, we, we live in a, in a broken world and some doctors will be so um, afraid to give you hydroxychloroquine and then you have nowhere to get it. So then, um, I, I don't know if I mentioned, but quercetin and, and zinc are over the counter. You don't need a prescription for it. So you, your doctor doesn't have to agree. You, know, you can just go and buy it. So uh, instead, and that's a replacement of hydroxychloroquine. Um, but then there are other doctors who will say, well, I, I don't feel like I want to give you hydroxychloroquine. Um, I'm not comfortable using it, but I, I'll give you ivermectin or I can give you budesonide or, or, or dexamethasone because doctors are more familiar with these drugs. So you can say, okay, um, I'll, take what, <laughs> I'll take what I can get. So you get some steroids, you get ivermectin, then you go to, to the pharmacy, you get quercetin. Um, and, and you also listen to, hey doc, can I have uh, azithromycin? Oh sure, I give it all the time. So, um, you can you can really kind of custom tailor it to um, to get the same result. The key, of course, is again uh, treat early. Um, you know before even the test results, uh, and the high risk group is the one that uh, is most important because they're the ones that die, and then here are all your options. I think it's a very important document, and I think that. Um, um, you should spread it if you can to anyone and everyone you know, so that um, if a patient <coughs> goes to the doctor, they can, uh, you know, even <laughs> educate the doctor because a, a lot of people here right now they don't know what to do with. Um, even now, after five months, they still tell patients, you know, go home to go home, and uh, you know, if you get a shorter breath, go to the hospital. That that's that's criminal and and malpractice and, and unfortunately the product of uh, propaganda. But we're getting there and you know, little by little, um, uh, the truth will come out. But at this point, I'm just focusing on uh, you know, spreading awareness, knowledge, and trying to save as many people as we can. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you so much. But based on your experience uh, following this protocol and uh, following most importantly, your Zelenka cocktail of, of three ingredients, uh, how it will affect the outcome in terms of getting to a hospital or surviving the hospital? Well, my data um, has been published. And actually, if you look at footnote um, one, um, that's a link to my, uh, to my paper, which will um, document everything I'm about to say. But my data showed a 84% reduction in hospitalization, which is, which is remarkable, meaning out of 100,000 patients that needed to be admitted, we could have prevented 84,000 of them. And a reduction in, in death uh, from a 5% expected death rate in this population to a 0 0.71 uh, reduction, more than a five-fold reduction in, in death. You, you'll never find anything even close um, to these results. Um, and it's not surprising because if you intervene early with drugs that have antiviral properties, um, it, it just makes sense that people will get better quicker. I mean, it's much easier, like I say, I've been saying all the time, it's much easier to put out a small fire than a large fire. Yeah, oh, this is my paper, yeah. Um, it's written together with uh, Dr. Martin Schultz and Dr. Roland Derwin, both, um, uh, senior medical re researchers. Uh, Dr. Schultz is in academia and Dr. Roland is in uh, industry, uh, big pharma actually. They reached out to me and we collaborated together. They've written many hundreds of papers. So I was happy to, I'm not a researcher, so I was happy to collaborate with them um, to present them my data. And we worked on this paper for a few months actually. It's really, uh, I, I think this is gonna be a fundamental um, kind of historic paper, because it's, a, it's the first paper that describes outpatient uh, intervention and treatment. Uh, and it's actually 
really essentially fighting the whole world because um, our governments and our medical systems uh, have failed us and they have suppressed common sense. And they, even to this day, there's no um, clinical trials that have been uh, at least finished that uh, describe any outpatient in intervention before the patient needs to the hospital. Because it seems that our governments uh, serve their purposes that we end up in, in, in the hospital, which is tragic. So this paper is, uh, is basically a rejection of that and a proof um, the, the only um, critique of this paper, people are going to say it's not randomized, it's not uh, prospective, that it's an observational study. My answer to, to those people was, is it's not a study. I wasn't doing research. I was practicing real medicine. This is real world evidence. This is a report from being in the trenches, being in the front lines, um, using certain uh, therapeutics, seeing good outcomes and analyzing that data. So this was not something that was planned. This was not something that was designed. This was something that a clinician uh, on the battlefield, so to speak, had to, who came up with an approach that kept people from dying. And you cannot critique that. Um, and I'm not making any claims that this is a, you know, a rigorous a research a document, what I am making claims is that the, the order of magnitude of, of outcomes, 84% uh, reduction in hospitalization and death, you know, even if there was a 10% reduction, we would use it. 10, 10%. If, if uh, certain drug, the drug A shows that 10% uh, of uh, people that take it uh, do better, we'll, we would use it. We're talking about here, 84%. I mean, let's say I'm even wrong by half. We're still talking about 40%. I mean, I'm not wrong here. This is, a, this is obvious, but I'm just saying, how could anyone with, uh, with a, into, who's intellectually honest and has some degree of morality as a human being um, negate such orders of magnitude? improvement uh, outcome. Well, yeah, Dr. Zilinka, I, I believe it was replicated by many doctors and by hospitals and actually by countries with, with similar results. Yes. Yes, a few countries in, um, in Central America, um, Honduras, for example, and some parts of Brazil, not the whole Brazil, but um, there's a <coughs> large medical system called Prevent Senior they take care of uh, senior citizens over the age of 65. I think of like 500,000 of them. They've been using it with tremendous results. And then many of my colleagues and um, also a city in um, Ukraine called Dnieper has, has instituted these protocols with good results. So, and Dr. Boudier Raoul in France, he's been doing this a long time. He started using zinc recently. And, um, so the data is there. It's only people that don't want this out. You know why there hasn't been studies published in pre-hospital? Because it works. And they don't want that information out there because it contradicts, it contradicts their uh, agenda, propaganda, and, and politics. So, that's uh, for today what I would like to share with you. And um, if you have any comments, I'd really appreciate it. Uh, I would appreciate, uh, maybe you can leave it on the, you know, by the comment section. <clears throat> so I want to thank you, uh, Dr. Zelenka, wishing you strength, full and complete recovery. And we want to hear more in the future. Thanks um, a lot. Thank you.